Hey guys, so with Hard Mode King's Fall coming out this week, I want to go into a little more detail with optimized subclass builds for the raid. Had a few questions during the raid guides as to what builds were good and where, so I'm going to go over every fight and every class and talk about what builds are going to be good for those fights. These are also builds that I use when I raid on my characters. Hopefully the Hard Mode won't change up these builds too much, but they're a good starting point. Titans will start with you. As for being a defender, you're going to go with a Bastion Illuminated build with Weapons of Light. This is a pretty standard build from year one. Having a ward last a long time is really important for fights like Warpriest and Golgoroth. With Bastion, you get 45 seconds of Ward of Dawn, which is long enough to last basically an entire damage cycle on Warpriest and for two and a half orbs on Golgoroth. Golgoroth, you'd place it down, grab your buff, grab your buff when going to the next orb, and then hopefully grab a final buff on your way to the third. Your grenade and jump can be whatever you like. I like magnetic grenade because it's really good for single target damage. I like war machine for my melee because it's easy to just punch a thrall and then quickly reload all of your weapons. If you are the only titan in a group, then you should probably be this build. This is a good build for basically all encounters in the raid and has been a good build since the game came out. For Sunbreakers, we have two builds, but it's basically Sunspots and no Sunspots. A full Sunspot build looks like this. Scorched Earth, Thermal Vent, Firekeeper, and Explosive Pyre. This is all-out Sunspots, very good for single target damage, and this is the kind of build that you might use on the War Priest. You're not going to be using Melting Point on the boss, and Melting Point really isn't that important to the fight, but then again, melee isn't important to this fight at all anyway. If you do opt to use Hammers on the boss, the Sunspots will end up doing a solid chunk of damage over time, but if the boss moves, then it's not as good, but it's still not too bad. If you keep the boss stunned the whole time, it works very, very well. A Sunspot build works great for the Daughters of Oryx as well. A no Sunspot build would be Forge Master, Melting Point, Explosive Pyre, and Simmering Flames, or Cauterize. This is a very strong build that you can make if you don't want Sunspots for any particular reason. What that reason might be in the raid, I'm not too sure, but it's there if you want that extra hammer throw. For Golgoroth, you're basically going to be a melting point bot for your team. I'm still unsure which is more valuable for Golgoroth if you only have one Titan, Melting Point or Weapons of Light. Weapons of Light does technically last longer, but Melting Point has a greater effect. Melting Point also requires a player to actually punch something, so that's time spent not damaging the boss with your weapons. It's pretty close. Melting Point also requires a piece of gear to be more effective for Golgoroth, and demands more of the player themselves. Anyway, if you are a Sunbreaker, you're going for a hybrid build of the No Sunspot build, so instead of Forge Master, just grab Scorched Earth. You shouldn't even need your super in this fight, but if you have to use it, leaving Sunspots on the ground is going to be very helpful during the Taken phase. You're also going to want to max your strength as much as possible and equip Insurmountable Skull Fort. With this build, you should be able to get a Melting Point debuff on Golgoroth every single orb. I haven't gotten to do much testing with Monte Carlo on this boss, but my initial instinct after the first couple of tests that I've done says that it won't be worth it, so don't worry about it for now. But Insurmountable Skull Fort, Simmering Flames, and Melting Point are the three things you want for Golgoroth if you're a Melting Point bot. Oryx is a fight where it really doesn't matter what spec you are. You could do that entire fight without ever using a super and be just fine. Defender is going to be the pick here, mainly for Weapons of Light, if you really want to min-max or you're having trouble with bringing down Oryx to stun him. You don't need to go Bastion, you could go Gift of the Void if you want more orbs, even though you don't need them. The reason is because you don't really need the ward to last 45 seconds, 30 seconds is totally fine. So to recap, Illuminated Bastion Defender works for basically everything, Sunspot Sunbreaker build for Warpriest and Daughters, Melting Point build for Golgoroth. Hunters, you're up next. I can tell you right now that Blade Dancer will not be in this video, much like Striker Titan was not in this video. Night Stalker is easily the most powerful of the Hunter subclasses for PvE. A pretty common build for Night Stalker is Black Hole, Vanish in Smoke, Light of the Pack, and Keen Scout, or maybe Shade Step if you really like it. This is a good build, but it's not really fine-tuned for anything, it's just kind of an everything build. I've been using much more specialized builds in King's Fall. 
For the War Priest, give Black Hole, Envenomed, Lockdown, and Keen Scout a try, which we'll call the Zone Control build. We sacrifice the Vanishing Smoke and Light of the Pack for supercharged Envenomed Smoke Grenades and regular grenades, which are a very, very powerful zone control tool. It can help for the wave of two wizards as well, just plant one by the doorway. Vanishing Smoke is much more of a reactionary tool, where you are using it if you run into trouble, but good players won't be putting themselves into trouble spots very often. It doesn't really help when damaging War Priest because you'll instantly become uncloaked, although you could argue it would help with having the AI de-target your team for a second. We don't need Light of the Pack or Courage of the Pack because we're not tethering targets to kill, we're tethering the boss to shoot for bonus damage, so having grenades and smokes last longer is better than, well, absolutely nothing. Use Vortex Grenade for the War Priest as well, not Void Wall. It's much easier to plant a Vortex right on the boss as opposed to Void Wall. For Golgoroth, the same build is pretty good as well. You can toss a Vortex and a Smoke Grenade on your own team, and with Lockdown, it lasts a pretty long time and can help protect much better than Vanish and Smoke. It kind of works like a MacGyver Helm of Saint-14 almost, and if you wanted to use Sealed Ahamkara Grips for two Smoke Grenades, you certainly could. However, if you wanted to leave the work of clearing ads for your Stormcaller Warlock during the Taken phase, then going back to Light of the Pack for Orb Generation is definitely a worthy investment to get your Warlock another super as fast as possible. It all depends on your team setup, who is performing what role, etc. For the Daughters of Oryx, the Zone Control build once again works. You're using Shadow Shot for boss damage, and you're not tethering any enemies when you use it. And Venomed Smoke Grenades can silence some enemies, which means they aren't shooting you as much, which means less flinching, which means more damage. Finally, for Oryx, swap over to Bloodbound, Vanish and Smoke, Light of the Pack, and your choice in the final column. This is because as you're grouping for Oryx damage and Corrupted Light Explosions, you'll tend to have a large group of adds forming on one side that you want to get rid of as fast as possible. A quick bow as people branch off to their Corrupted Light means the player holding the Aura and the Flex player can kill those adds really fast, not to mention a Vanish and Smoke gets people to their Corrupted Light in a much safer fashion, although it's not 100% necessary. Stormcallers, you're up next, but I have to say that you guys don't really have anything super crazy you need to worry about. Stormcallers aren't amazing in any particular section of the raid except for Golgoroth, and that's only during a very small portion of it. A pretty standard build is going to be Landfall, Rising Storm, Transcendence, and Electrostatic Mind, or Perpetual Charge. If you have the Impossible Machines, you're going to take Superconductor instead for obvious reasons. The reason we take all those other abilities that I just said is because those are the strongest abilities we have available and there aren't many things that we'd want for one fight over another. For War Priest, the most I do is go super the second wave of wizards that spawn, but that's not even necessary, nor is it even really smart to do. In fact, I would almost encourage you to go to a different subclass like Voidwalker with an energy drain focused build so you can plant longer lasting vortex grenades and nova bombs on the boss, but even that isn't necessary. You're free to do whatever you want here. Sunseeker Grenade Spam is not going to be more damage than Sniper Headshots. A bunch of Solar Grenades on the boss might do something, but it's not really a game changer. For Golgoroth, Stormcallers are actually pretty good during the Taken phase of the encounter. Anything that's going to enable you to have your super is going to be useful. Anything that lets you do as much damage as possible is going to be useful. So that's basically everything listed in the earlier build. If you're in the pit doing Golgoroth damage, then Transcendence and Electrostatic Mind are the obvious choices. If you're not, I guess you could take Perpetual Charge and Feedback instead, as using your super while you are tanking Golgoroth is, well, a pretty terrible idea, so you'll want to focus as much as possible on your grenade and melee. For Daughters of Oryx, it doesn't really matter what you use once again. There is very little with regards to fighting adds, most of the encounter is boss damage, and your super is not going to do more damage than constant sniper rifle shots. Oryx himself is the same thing. Stormcaller is not particularly useful or needed for the encounter, but then again, no subclass from any class is, really. Nightstalker feels very effective, but if you didn't have a Nightstalker, it still wouldn't be a big deal. The Oryx encounter is completely, completely execution based. You can get through that fight no problem without ever having to use any super on any class at all, and that does frequently happen to me. I had to force myself to remember to use my Shadow Shot and my Vanish and Smoke for Oryx for the background footage of the video. I don't even normally do that, although it is a good idea. 
Sunsinger really isn't useful anywhere in particular, at least more so than the other subclasses. Voidwalker, same deal. Basically, Warlocks, you can do nearly anything you want for King's Fall, and it would not have a large impact on your ability to perform. Unless it's Golgroth, then you might want to be a non-tank Stormcaller. Those are my suggestions for the subclass builds for the raid. For heroic strikes and whatnot, most of these builds are going to serve you quite well. Any sort of boss-focused build suggested here will work just fine for any strike bosses. Titans going Insurmountable Skull Fort and Melting Point build for bosses is going to make things go a little bit quicker. Same thing for Black Hole Night Stalkers. But do you have to use those builds? Nah. But if you're going for a fully optimized, maximum efficiency kind of build, those are the things to swap to for bosses. Then during adds, switch over to stuff that focuses on ad killing instead. That's going to do it for me. Thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.